All right. Again, thanks everyone for joining us. We are here to talk about Mainline Gives. Really exciting giving day in its first year up in the Philadelphia area. Uh, for those of you that have not uh, been on a previous webinar, um, we have had one uh, earlier that focused on some of the basics, how to use uh, the platform, how to update your page. Um, and today we're really going to focus on strategy, getting into a little bit more about email, social media strategy, securing a match, how to engage donors, really focus on kind of the next steps of once you've built a great page for your campaign, how do you really get it out into the world and make it work for you so that hopefully each participating organization can have a really successful campaign for Mainline Gifts. So I am Bethany, I'm the project manager here uh, working with the great Mainline Gives team. Um, for those of you that might have seen an announcement, might not have seen an announcement, uh, Razu is uh, the technology partner that uh, signed on to support the Mainline Gives event. Um, and we just, in the last week or two, went through a rebrand and a name change. So we are now Mighty Cause. Uh, our whole team, platform, it's all the same great stuff just an exciting new name and logo. So for anyone that's maybe seen the two names, a little confused by Mighty Cause, uh, Mighty Cause used to be Razu, this is our new name. So just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that, didn't have any questions there. Um, I'll mention as we go through this, if you do have questions as we move throughout the presentation, please um, add them in that sidebar panel um, for GoToWebinar right on the right side of your screen. We'll make sure that we make time at the end of the webinar to answer and address any questions that you have that pop up throughout the presentation. So now we're going to jump right into it, what we're all here to talk about, which is Mainline Gives. It's happening May 31st. This is, as I mentioned, the first year for this giving event. Um, and it's really so exciting to have an opportunity for 24 hours of focused giving. Nonprofits are always fundraising, always looking for what's going to be the message, what's going to be the cause, what's going to be uh, the next thing to really grab donors' attention and engage them. And that's really what's exciting about a giving day is you've got 24 hours of focused giving. So it really creates an extra sense of urgency as well as community engagement around fundraising. So it's important to remember that Mainline Gives is an opportunity for each individual nonprofit to host a great campaign for their own fundraiser, or their own nonprofit, excuse me. Raise funds, raise awareness for your cause in particular. Engage your existing donors, find opportunities through your network to reach new donors, all that great stuff. And then, a great added benefit of a giving day is that there's a larger local effort going on. And we'll talk a little bit more about this, live events happening on the day, all the great work that the Mainline Gives team is doing to help spread the word, to get corporate partners engaged, media partners learning about what this event is really all about and what nonprofits are able to be supported through this event. So aside from the campaign that you will run for your organization, there's this larger local effort going on that you get to tap into, ideally getting new donors more dollars to support your efforts through being a part of this event. So one of the biggest ways that that larger local effort is going to play in is the community fund. So this is a fund that will be available for donors that hear about this event, whether through the Mainline Gives marketing effort, media, um, any of the great events happening during the day, people will have the option to come to the Mainline Gives site and either choose a specific nonprofit to give to if they know of one or have supported one in the past, or if they don't, but they just want to support the effort at large, they're able to give to this community fund. Uh, this is also where any corporate gifts will go, any foundation grants um, that are won as a part of this effort will go into the community fund. And then after the event is over, this community fund will be evenly distributed 
among all the participating organizations that are a part of Mainline Give. So that's where that chance for extra dollars comes back into play. Um, and so more information will be available on this community fund as we go forward, um, including perhaps some requirements that participating organizations will have to complete to make sure they're eligible, perhaps uh, completing the planning guide. There will be more detail on that if there are specific requirements available. Um, but keep in mind that this is going to be a great opportunity to hopefully walk away with extra funds above and beyond anything that you are able to raise for uh, your organization during the giving day. Um, I will pause and take a moment because I see we've got one question that's already um, popped up uh, to how many organizations are participating in Mainline Gives. Um, as of right now, I think we've, we're at around 50 organizations participating. Um, I don't know if any of the Mainline Gives organizers that are on have any uh, extra thoughts to add about that in terms of whether there will be more signing on, but I think we're right around 50 at this point that are a part of this event. All right, so moving on from the community fund, another thing that I mentioned was lots of exciting things that will be happening on the day of the event in particular. So of course, 24 hours of giving, that's exciting, that's the urgency, that's what really makes a giving day fun. And all of these live events that are happening throughout the day are going to add to that. So there will be representatives at SEPTA stations during the morning, I believe handing out water bottles, engaging morning commuters on their way to work, making sure they're aware of mainline gives and hopefully participating, finding a cause and supporting. There'll also be an event that is getting representatives out to office parks during the lunch hour to again, find an opportunity to really reach large groups of people where they will be and a closing celebration towards the end of the day. So more details will be available on this from the Mainline Gives team in particular, um, but I will say that volunteers will likely be needed to support all of these efforts. And so keep an eye out for any more information and or volunteer signups um, as they relate to these events. And one final piece here before we dig into some of the strategy in particular is I want to make sure everyone is aware of all of the resources that are available to support your campaign. So as I mentioned, we had a training earlier in April that really focused on some of the basics of what is a giving day, how do I edit my page, how do I access my donations report, all that kind of great stuff. We recorded that training and that is available at mainlinegives.org through the nonprofit toolkit. So if you missed that training, no need to worry. You can, on your own time, access the website and rewatch that training. There's a number of other resources available there as well to help you put your campaign together, like a planning guide, a checklist that you can follow. Um, so make sure that you visit that nonprofit toolkit so that you don't reinvent the wheel and try to uh, come up with everything all on your own. Borrow some of what's already been prepared to help you put this campaign together. You'll also find an FAQs, answer any questions that you might have, and uh, as I just mentioned on volunteer opportunities for those live events, the site will be updated with more information about what's needed for those volunteer opportunities, as well as a link to sign up if you'd like to um, sign up for any of those volunteer opportunities. All right, so now we are, oops, sorry about that, moving on here. Um, so I just covered some of this briefly. Um, we already spent a full training going into the basics, but for anyone that wasn't there, I just wanted to make sure that we covered it quickly here. Uh, your organization page on through mainlinegives.org, that's really what you need to focus on. That's where you're going to update content, to tell your story, add photos and text. That's where you'll access any donation information once all of your awesome donations start pouring in. Uh, this is the page, this is the link that you'll be sharing in emails, social media posts, 
that's the page you'll be sending people to to make their donations for mainline gifts. You must be an admin for your organization in order to customize that page. So many of you are already administrators and you've already accessed your page and that's great. For anyone that feels like they don't know how to access their page or they can't get into it yet, you may not be an admin. So when you go to mainlinegives.org and find your organization's name, there should be a button or a link on the page that says manage this organization. If you don't yet have access when you're logged into your account, click manage this organization and that's how you'll uh, just give us some brief information so that we can make sure you have access to your page. And as I mentioned, above and beyond that, lots of great tips for customizing your page available in that first webinar. So if you're looking for information on that in particular, make sure you do refer back to that first webinar for more info there. Okay, and now to what we're really gonna spend time covering today, social media and email strategy. So you spend all this time building a great page for your campaign. But if you just build it and it sits there, no one will come. So lots of great tips to spread the word about your campaign. Social media and email are not the only strategies, but they're two of the most important to consider. So we'll spend some time digging into those today. Next, we'll talk about matching grants. So just in the same way that a giving day is exciting for a fundraising campaign because it adds an extra sense of urgency that's what a matching gift can do for your own campaign as well. So a matching gift always adds that extra sense of urgency and that extra sense of impact for donors really can make an impact on how much they end up giving, perhaps they're sharing, perhaps they're coming back to give again. So we'll talk about just a couple of simple, easy steps to add a matching grant to your own nonprofit's campaign for the giving day really help ensure your own success for the event. Finally, we'll cover some tips to engage your donors and leave some time at the end for Q&A. So again, feel free to type in questions in that side panel as we move throughout the presentation and we'll leave some time for that at the end. So first we'll start with social media. Of course, we all know social media, we all use it personally and professionally. Everybody wants their campaign to always go viral, and only a handful of them do. So aside from that, there's lots of things that you can put into place for your own strategy to really create an effective uh, campaign on social media as a part of your larger communications plan. Of course, social media will not be your only strategy. Email will, will not be your only strategy. They should ideally be parts of a larger comprehensive multi-channel strategy where you're recognizing where do donors usually find out about you, learn about you, interact with you, and then talking to them in all of those different channels. But first we'll dig into Facebook. Of course, one of the most important ways to communicate with supporters is through Facebook. People spend tons of time every day on Facebook, so it's a great way to reach people. So it's important to think about when you're on Facebook, what is it that you're posting about? How are you posting? Make your posts engaging and creative. Videos, photos, a long paragraph of text is almost always going to be not fully read. So keep it short, sweet, add imagery. Personal testimonials are also a really great strategy to consider as well, especially for a giving day. Once you've nailed down exactly what it is you're raising funds for, whether it's a specific program within your organization or operating funds for the organization as a whole, a personal testimonial, a personal story is always going to appeal to donors much more so than you know, information about why Philadelphia needs this service or how many individuals are impacted by this service. It's that personal story that individuals often connect with. So make sure to think about how you can really build out content that's going to include, of course, photos and videos, but create those, create and share those personal stories that will be um, engaging for supporters. Make sure to always include the hashtag MainlineGives in your posts. Schedule posts ahead of time. 
of course, when the giving day comes, it can be a little busy. There's a lot going on. Uh, you're sending emails. You're trying to engage with donors. So one of the best things that you can do for yourselves is schedules posts ahead of time, both on Facebook and on Twitter. On Facebook, you can do it right through the app. On Twitter, you can do it through TweetDeck. Um, by scheduling posts ahead of time, you'll ensure that when the day comes, you still have time to engage on social media, but you can spend that time rather than creating posts to make sure you've got a full day of content, you can reply, you can comment, you can tag supporters. You can use the day of to actually have more of a conversation and engagement with supporters on both of these channels. Um, I always encourage considering a budget for boosted posts uh, for the giving day itself. Now, of course, nonprofit resources are always limited, uh, but with Facebook in particular, uh, you have the option for boosted posts to help increase your organic reach. Now, Facebook is always kind of changing their algorithms, and so it's hard to know what, what can I really do to make sure that my posts are being seen? Because if you've got all these great posts, but they're not being seen, your organic reach is very low, it doesn't matter how awesome your post is. So I'd encourage you to consider even a small budget for boosted Facebook posts on the giving day itself. Of course, on the day, your strategy, aside from making sure people are aware of what you're raising funds for and that it's a part of Mainline Gives, giving shout outs and thank yous to either donors or volunteers that are helping with this event in particular, donors that have given. Some may love to be tagged and called out specifically on social media. Some may prefer to remain anonymous and don't really want that. So obviously know your donors, but when possible, use Facebook as a tool to engage and say thank you and have that conversation. Um, and of course, posting progress updates. Hopefully you're making awesome progress all throughout the day, whether you have a matching grant and you are making progress towards it, or your goal is $5,000 and you've raised 2,500. Whatever it is as the day progresses, you should hopefully have lots of progress to be sharing with your supporters. So social media is a great place to do that, specifically Facebook, of course, so that you keep your emails focused on asking for donations, a really clear call to action. Social media can be a great place to provide that extra content, provide progress updates without overwhelming your donors with 10 emails on the day itself. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to Facebook is, um, and you may have seen this already in your, um, in your efforts, Facebook has their own sort of approach to fundraising for nonprofits. And so when you go to post a link to your mainlinegives.org page, you may be prompted to add a donate button, just like you see in this uh, example here. That donate button is not going to send donors to the page that you've taken all your time to create and build out. That's going to encourage donors to donate through Facebook to your organization. Now, the good thing is at the end of the day, you will still receive those donations, but they will not be associated with mainline gives. They're not going to be um, channeled through the strategy and the campaign you're working on. And um, though I don't have personal experience, I have heard from a number of nonprofits that it can be a difficult and tricky process to actually get those funds from Facebook over time. So just as a little heads up, if you do see that donate button, that prompt above it, be wary because that's not going to encourage donors to donate through the strategy that you're actually trying to promote on Facebook. So it can be a little bit confusing for donors, supporters, seeing different CTAs going different places. So moving on to Twitter, of course, a lot of the same things to keep in mind from Facebook. You want to keep your posts short and engaging. Um, Twitter helps you keep them shorter by their limitations. Um, but it's always important to just remember people are often scrolling through social media. So if you don't have something that grabs their attention right towards the beginning of your post, they're likely to scroll right past it. So always make sure to link to your page. Um, this is critical. If somebody sees a great post and they're interested in your work, but they don't have a link, they don't have a call to action of where to go and what to do, 
they're not going to be able to take action on it. So make sure you very specifically say, donate now, give now, share this page, whatever it is that you're asking for donors and supporters to do, make that call to action very clear and make sure that the link is always accessible in any of these posts. Again, as I mentioned, you can schedule posts ahead of time uh, through a, an app like TweetDeck. Um, and by scheduling them ahead of time, you'll leave that opportunity on the day of giving itself to engage with your followers on Twitter, reply to them, share tweets, um, re retweet any mentions, all that kind of great stuff to make sure that you've really got a lot of activity happening during the day. Um, one other thing when it comes to social engagement is you have the opportunity through your page on mainlinegives.org to customize your social share experience. So when you're editing your page, after you've filled out the content, you've added photos and some text to tell a story, I encourage you to visit the settings tab of your page where you'll have the opportunity to customize the social share experience. And by that, I mean, make sure that the image that's being shared when somebody shares your link on social media is the most powerful image it can be. Sometimes you may want that to be your logo. Sometimes you may want that to be something else if you have a more powerful image that's really gonna capture someone's attention. And you'll also have the opportunity to update the text that is associated with your link when it gets shared as well. So important just to make sure we do all this to try to get people to share and spread the word on social media what is associated with your link, your mainline gives page um, when it's shared, make sure it is really active language to help people understand, donate today to support X for our nonprofit. So I encourage you to visit that to customize the social share experience, as well as consider embedding a donation widget externally. So again, you do all this work to build a great Razoo page and a lot of your efforts, email, social media, what have you, will direct people right to that Mainline Gives page to make their donation. But you may have some individuals that find you on Facebook, go to your blog, go to your website. And so by installing a donation widget on your website, on your blog, on your Facebook page, you give people the opportunity to donate where they are. So it's just kind of a nice complimentary tool to if somebody does visit your website on May 31st, they can make a donation right from your website that is a, still a part of your Mainline Gives campaign. All right, so now we'll jump into email strategy and we're just gonna cover it briefly here, um, but I wanted to make sure to take the time to just call out a few key things to keep in mind as you plan out an effective email strategy for your Mainline Gives campaign. So first and foremost, email is one of the top conversion tools for online giving. So it's critical that email is a part of your strategy. It's one of the number one ways that people actually commit, take action, and make their donation. So all the other strategies that you have, definitely complemented with email. We always encourage uh, emails to be sent in advance. You don't have to send five or 10 emails in advance but at least one and maybe even two ahead of the event, more as a save the date kind of heads up, let people know what's coming. And we'll talk about it more in a, in a minute, uh, but people can make their donation early for the event. So when you start to um, start the conversation with some of these emails in advance, you're one, getting it on people's radar so that they're aware and they know what's coming on May 31st when you follow up with them, but you also do give the opportunity for some of those individuals that wanna go ahead and make their donation early to do that. Of course, the day of the event, we encourage multiple emails. Um, I know many nonprofits are always concerned about over communicating, so there's of course a way to do it right. But for such an important day, for such an important opportunity, we encourage a few emails to be sent, make the language really active, give now, give today, make sure people understand what it is that they're supporting when they give to your organization and why it's important to give today for mainline gifts. Because people can give at any time throughout the year and by having your campaign on mainline gifts, 
you're hoping they choose today. You're hoping they commit today and make their gift. So one of the ways that you can ensure that you're not over communicating or effectively communicating with your donors is by segmenting your emails. So what's easiest and often many nonprofits have to do is just send one or two blast emails to your entire list. And while that is easier and a bit quicker, you definitely uh, will have a lower response rate and engagement rate when you do it that way than say pulling out a few key groups. For example, monthly donors. Hopefully you've got a great set of donors that give on a recurring basis, monthly, quarterly, what have you, to your organization. Because they've already made that commitment and they give to your organization every month, you may want to talk to them differently about this campaign. When you introduce Mainline Gives, you can recognize we know you support us all year round and that's so important to us. We wanted to make sure you're aware of this exciting opportunity. It's important to recognize that those people already give to you every single month out of the year. You may talk to them a little bit differently than you would to somebody who's never made a donation to your organization and you're using this campaign as a chance to solicit that first gift. Same with volunteers, board members. These are groups that interact diff differently with your organization. So a more personalized communication, and that doesn't mean Dear Bethany, but a more personalized really understanding and speaking to them about what's important to them and in a way that recognizes their relationship with your organization is always going to increase your response rate and engagement rate from emails. So if that feels a little bit overwhelming, try not to worry. Just choose a few key groups that are important to segment in this way and do a one or two segmented emails with them. Um, just as with social media, make sure you always have a link. And in email in particular, really important to have a clear CTA button in your email. However, whatever kind of format and uh, design program you might use, make sure you've got a big visible button that says give now, donate now, whatever variation of that language that you'd like. Make sure that button is really easy to see prominent in your email and that that links right to your mainline gives page. I always encourage a B testing if that's possible with the system that you use test on different subject lines. What subject lines gets people to open more of your emails. Great. It's also nice to test what time of day do your supporters usually respond better first thing in the morning or in the afternoon. Um, all these kinds of things that you can test on will help make sure that your emails are really the most effective that they can be on the day itself. And finally, mobile, mobile, mobile. Um, we all know that so much more is happening on mobile than it ever has in the past. And so your mainline gifts page is fully optimized for mobile. When people get to that page on their mobile device, they'll have a really easy time navigating, reading your story, and making their donation on mobile. But many times what's going to bring them there is your emails, which they are first opening on mobile. So make sure many email programs have this, the ability to preview the mobile view. Um, but either way, send yourself a test email and open it up on your smartphone. Make sure that when you do see it on mobile, the donate button isn't hidden or visible or cut off, whatever it might be. So always take the time to preview your mobile experience. All right, now we're going to jump into matching gift strategy. So as I mentioned earlier, matching gifts are really an exciting uh, opportunity as a part of a giving day campaign. And the reason for that is twofold. One, it's because it adds that extra sense of urgency, that extra engagement gives you more to talk about as a part of your campaign. Not to mention that it actually can double or even triple your totals at the end of the day, but it really can have effect on the donor psychology of engaging, actually making their donation, actually increasing their donation amount. So it's, it really is proven that campaigns that have a match associated with them have higher success rates and the emails 
and the communication that lead to those as well. So I encourage you to really think about if there is a way to build this into your campaign this year. And so we'll jump into just a couple of easy steps that you can take to try and build this into your campaign. And it doesn't have to be a $20,000 match to make it worthwhile. It can be 1,000, it can be 2,500, it can be 5,000. It can be a match from one individual person, like a major donor that supports your organization, or it can be from a group of people. If you can get a couple of individuals to come together to make a donation that you can use as a match, you can pull it together to have it make a larger impact. Board members are a really great example for that. Go to your board and ask if together they can put up, each of them put up a little bit that will together make a board match for your uh, campaign. Really effective strategy there. Of course, corporate partners, always a great uh, option to consider for a match because there is visibility that can often come with a match as we'll talk about. So it can be a good opportunity for that corporate partner. The reason it can be effective for a corporate partner is the marketing power that can come with it. So make sure just as when you're asking for a company to sponsor an event or an opportunity that you have, just make sure they're aware of what, what's in it for them, what can you offer them. Of course, the, that's the opportunity to mention them in donor emails, on social media, thank them, recognize them as the matching donor if that is important to them. And I'll show you in a bit, you can add that information right to your page on Mainline Gives. So you can add any match incentive that you have available so that donors, when they're making their donation, they'll see that opportunity and make the match. But you can also, on, in that same place, recognize the grantor um, that has provided the match. So you give them lots of opportunities if they'd like to be recognized for their support. And it's important when you are making the ask, once you've identified who you're going to ask, appeal to their interest. Why do you need a matching grant from them? What can you accomplish with them, with their help, with their match that you couldn't on your own? And, and try to help them see it as an opportunity to really leverage their support. So, of course, you may have a different ask if it's a corporate partner versus a major donor. But if it's a major donor, and they give a large gift to your organization every year, you can present this as an opportunity for them to make that same gift that they make every year, but it can be leveraged to have a much bigger impact for your organization. By giving it today, by giving it as a match, as a part of Mainline Gives, they can help to make sure that you raise the other half of that $5,000 to complete the project that you're trying to complete or to serve the people that you're trying to serve. Um, so it's important to think about what's what's really going to matter to this individual that you're asking or this group that you're asking. If it's a corporate partner, there likely is more of that marketing aspect that will be important. But for that major donor, likely they've got a long relationship with your organization. Their goal is impact. Their goal is supporting. So think about that when you plan the uh, the outreach and the ask. Once you have secured a matching gift, it's important to really make sure you use it to the best of your ability. So communicate that match to your donors, right on your page, on social media, in emails. This is particularly something that's really helpful to talk about on the day of the event itself. Say you've secured a $5,000 match, that gives you a lot to talk about on the day of the event. We've raised $2,500, we've got 2,500 more to go to meet our match. Always the opportunity to double or triple uh, through the platform. You can have a 100% match, two to one match, three to one match, lots of flexibility there. So it gives you a lot to talk about. It gives you that sense of urgency and it gives donors, the more they're aware of it, gives them that extra incentive to maybe bump up their gift size a little bit or that further sense of urgency that, hey, today is the day I need to make my gift because not only is it made my gift, but they have a matching grant that's available to them if they raise $5,000 today. And again, as I mentioned, talking about it throughout the day, $1,000 left to go, $500 left to go, that will be displayed on your page, which is helpful, but make sure you use that and communicate that again 
get other people kind of in on the same team and excited about helping you reach that goal, reach that goal. And we still have plenty of time. Um, so I'd encourage you to start right away reaching out, uh, identifying people and reaching out so that if you do for a match, you've got lots of opportunities to build it into a communication plan, start spreading the word about that opportunity and or perhaps about the donor that is helping to give you that opportunity. So as I mentioned, once you do secure your match, we definitely encourage you to add it to your page on Mainline Gifts. The donor does not need to pay their match through the platform. This is really just an opportunity for you to add that really fun little icon of a match and grant live next to the donate button on your page and share more information about that match opportunity, who, who is giving that match, what type of match, how much is left and how much time is left. Um, to really help donors understand this exciting opportunity. So that's something that you can access um, through when you're editing and customizing your page, you'll have the opportunity to add any matching grants there. So now to uh, finish off here, we'll cover a handful of tips uh, for engaging new donors as part of the website. So the first thing that I wanna talk about here is early donation. I mentioned this earlier on in the presentation, but you can start accepting donations for your mainline Give campaign starting May 1st. So that's really great opportunity to start building momentum before the event. Now, as we talked about already, part of what's so exciting about it is the day is that 24 hours access to the the day of the event. If you don't want to really hit hard, So, again, coming back to donor psychology here, somebody that comes to a page and sees zero dollars raised, they're going to think a little bit differently than if they come to a page that already has five hundred dollars, already has a thousand dollars. It's just something about donor psychology, individual psychology of wanting to support something that's already got some traction. So this is a great opportunity to reach out to a few supporters whether that's some board members, asking some of your staff um, or close, close supporters to just make a couple of those early donations so that when May, May 31st comes, you're already hitting the ground running with a total to help ensure your success for the day. And just technically, uh, so that everyone's aware, when any one individual makes their donation from May 1st on, their donation will be processed immediately just as if they were to give on the giving day. It's just that it'll count as a part of your giving day campaign. So we've talked a little bit already about segmentation, why it's so important for engagement. It's really going to increase your response rate, increase the engagement, because the donor is, when they see an email that speaks to them more about the way they've supported or what their interests are in your organization, it's going to help with that stewardship. And it's sort of a subtle process, but that ongoing stewardship that you know who they are, you care about who they are as an individual and what their interests are, and that's why you're providing opportunities for them that you think they'll be interested in. Always important to recognize previous support if somebody's already given to you this year or um, give to you on a monthly basis, as I mentioned, and make it personal wherever you can. When it comes to communicating effectively, this is something that, you know, we've already talked a little bit about this, but it bears repeating because different audiences, different, different nonprofits will have different messages that resonate with their audience. And so it's important to 
understand what works and what doesn't work with your audience. And as we've already mentioned, it may not be one message that works with your entire audience, but start to really understand that. There are some donors, some individuals that are really going to respond to understanding big picture numbers. We serve 500 families a year and we put out 68 meals a day, whatever it might be. There are some donors that might respond to that. Many donors are going to respond more to a personal message or personal story that they can connect with on an individual level. But it's important that you know what works for your audience. So that's part of the value of that testing. You know, we sent one email that had a message that really focused on A, and we sent a second email that had a message that was very different focused on B. And honestly, B got a lot more response. We had more people open it, we had more people click, and we had more donations come from that. Understand what messages are really resonating with your audience and then play more into that. And of course, always use the opportunity to reinforce your impact. This is important both before donors are giving and you're trying to help them understand what the impact of their gift can be, but also after the giving event. Make sure that you don't miss that great opportunity for follow-up to tell them what impact they did have with their gift. What impact has your organization been able to have thanks to their gift, thanks to the Mainline Gives campaign in general? Of course, saying thank you. It's an obvious thing, but there's no way to say thank you enough. And honestly, when it comes to donor retention, donor retention is very low across the nonprofit sector, as many of you might know. And oftentimes, one of the number one reasons that donors are not retained is that they don't feel followed up with enough after their gift. Part of that is saying thank you, saying it right away, but also saying it in a way that's meaningful to them. So whether that's a personal thank you, or as we were just talking about, really showcasing them the impact of that work. But making sure that beyond that initial thank you, you kind of build that into a longer year-round strategy of communication and engagement, recognizing their support and providing further opportunities for them to be involved and support. So with that, um, we're through what I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up for any questions. So if you um, haven't asked any questions yet, feel free to use this opportunity now to type them in. So, all right, let's see. Oh, it looks like I might have a couple of people telling me that um, the sound was muffled for a short time. I'm sorry about that. Um, so hopefully those of you uh, that have made it through uh, were able to catch most of this. Um, if when I go back and actually listen to the recording, if the recording is muffled and you're not able to hear, I'll make sure to re-record so that you've got the full uh, presentation available there. So now I'm going to jump into any of the questions that have come up throughout. Let's see. Okay, good question. When sharing on social media, is it more effective to share a link directly to your nonprofit's page rather than a link to mainlinegives.org so they spend more time learning about the giving day before they look up your organization? Great question. And I think the, the short answer is whenever you are planning your own fundraising campaign, you want to create the smallest, lowest number of clicks that a donor will have to take to make their gift to your organization. So for Mainline Gives, when you are soliciting your donors in particular, when you are sharing on social media, when you're sending emails, you'll always wanna send people directly to your page because that is the quickest path for them to learn about your organization and make their gift. Now, it might be helpful to add some information on your page that says, this is why we're a part of Mainline Gives. This is what Mainline Gives is all about, so that they're also getting that information. But by taking an extra step and sending them to mainlinegives.org, 
there's just a couple extra steps that they would have to take to find your organization and then to make that gift. So for each individual nonprofit, I'd encourage you to send directly the link directly to your page. But then of course, what a lot of the work that the Mainline Gives Committee is doing to spread the word at large through these events, any kind of external promotion like that, that will all be directed to MainlineGives.org so that those donors who are not coming, not being pulled in directly by a specific nonprofit, they'll have the opportunity to learn about the event, the campaign as a whole, and then find nonprofits to give to. Okay. All right, well, it seems like most of the questions that we had were really more people telling me about uh, issues with sound. So we don't have any other questions at this point. Um, if you do have any questions after today's webinar, you can email support at mightycause.com. Um, as I said, I'll go back and listen through the presentation. And if it's not an effective recording because things are cut out for a bit, then we'll go ahead and re-record and make sure that we do have an available recording of the presentation up on the mainlinegives.org website um, as soon as we can so that you can listen again, you can share with colleagues, um, and hopefully use it as a tool as you help to build out your Mainline Gifts campaign. Um, all right, so thanks everyone for your time this afternoon. Don't hesitate to reach out to our support team with any questions, and good luck with your Mainline Gives campaign.